27, uh, we talk about triple integral in logical coordinates. Okay? So I actually have a picture here. Uh, it looks like a cylinder and how symmetrical coordinates look like. Okay, so we're going to get into more detail. Now, first of all, uh, when do we use cylindrical coordinates? So you see over here, this is circular shape, such as the type of a uh, K pen. You can model that using cylindrical coordinates. Cylindrical coordinates, and um, later next time, we're going to talk about a uh, spherical coordinate. Uh, make it possible to easily describe the surface that will be very difficult to express when you use equation in rectangular coordinate. This kind of shape will be better to describe using symmetrical coordinate or maybe later using spherical coordinate. We actually have used this uh, in air traffic control. They use the radar system that work with a uh, symmetrical coordinate. The value of R and beta, okay, you look at here. The value of this R here and the data over here gives the horizontal distance and angle of uh, the airplane from the control tower. And then the value of Z is the plane's elevation. So if you have a plane over here, then the Z here is the elevation of the plane. Okay. okay, now first, let's with your Cartesian and polar coordinate and how to convert them. So, what does x equal to? How can I express this in terms of r and theta? r cosine theta, yes, this is. So this is going to be, it's going to be r cosine theta. And y equal to what? r sine theta, right? R squared equal to what? Look at this. X squared plus Y squared. Tangent data equal to? Mm -hmm. Equal to Y over X. Yeah, we got it. Okay, good. Now keep this four equation here in mind when we do symmetrical coordinate. Now in symmetrical coordinate, it looks like this. So for a point in space, then the first two coordinates will be in polar coordinate. So in terms of R and beta. But then the Z coordinate will stay the same. So leave it as it is. So for example, you have a point over here. Then the Z coordinate, and you just leave it as it is. But then instead of X and Y coordinate here, and you would use the polar coordinate, R and beta. R is from, R is the radius of this circle, and data is this angle from the positive x axis to this, to this, um, to the projection of this point, like this way over here. All right, so, question? So does it look like a cylinder to you when you look at this, right? This, where the name comes from? So we call this cylindrical coordinate. Okay. Okay, let's maybe look at some examples. Now to convert from cylindrical to rectangular coordinate, uh, we use this equation x equal to r cosine data before, y equal to r sin data, and z equal to what? Yeah, z equal to z itself. It doesn't change. Okay. Z itself. All right, now, um, if you want to convert back uh, from rectangular to symmetrical coordinate, I uh, will use this equation, r squared equal to what? x squared plus y squared, and tangent data equal to y over x and z equal to z itself, right? So z is all, uh, always stays the same, except the x and y coordinate you're gonna replace by the polar coordinate. So let's look at this first example. Over here, it says that it is a symmetrical coordinate, which means this is r, this is the data, and this is z. 
The first two will be in polar coordinate. Okay. We want to find a rectangular coordinate. So how can we find the x and y then? We're going to use number to convert. Okay. Into rectangular coordinate, we're going to use this three equation, right? So what does x equal to? x equal to all cosine theta. In this case, what's r? Two. So we're going to have two times cosine or what's theta? Two pi over three. Okay. What's cosine of two pi over three? Everyone? <laughs> we use the <a> calculation. <laughs> Is a negative one half? Yes, you got it. Okay, negative one half. So the answer here is negative one. Okay. Let's try the y coordinate. It is r times sine theta. So r times sine of two pi over three. With sine of two pi over three. With, with three over two. Good job. Okay. So simplify, we get further three. What about z? What does z equal to? It's one, okay? So therefore, this point is the corresponding point in rectangular coordinate, right? Okay. Okay, part B. We want to find symmetrical coordinate of the point with this rectangular coordinate. So this time, we're given rectangular coordinate and we want to convert back to symmetrical coordinate. We're going to use this three equation over here. So let's figure out, we need to figure out R. Remember, we need to R data and Z, right? So we need to figure out R. So what does R equal to? Square root of, square root of, um, <laughs> square root of X squared plus Y squared. So X squared here is three squared. Y squared is negative three squared. Okay. So X squared with the 18. Um, simplifying, you get the three square root of two. Okay, that's correct. Okay, good, good job. All right, now we need to figure out data, right? Tangent data is y over x, right? So that will be negative two. Oh, wrong place. Negative three over, which is negative one. Okay. So data equal to what? Data equal to well depends on depends on which which quadrant it is, right? Uh, look at this x and y, right? X is three, the x here is three, y is negative three. So on the xy plane it is at at the four quadrant. Okay. Then the data over here, if tangent data equal negative one, the data over here could be well, could be equal to negative pi, pi over 4, or could be equal to 7 pi over 4. When you take the inward tangent of negative 1, you actually get negative pi over 4. Okay. But 7 pi over 4 would also work. Okay. So this one, actually, so let's, uh, if you just solve this trick equation, data can actually be negative pi over 4 plus any multiple of 2 pi. So 2m pi. Okay. Any, any multiple, if you any, any multiple 2 pi, you still end up at the same angle here, right? Okay. Now, z is equal to what? Negative 7, right? Remember in symmetrical coordinate, the last coordinate z stays the same, right? So it's going to be negative seven. It doesn't change. So now for this point, you can actually the angle you can pick that to be seven pi over four, or you can pick the angle to be negative pi over four, or any other any other num uh, angle that is going to add two pi multiple two pi to to this or this. All right. So you can see that with um, for symmetrical coordinate, the co there are many the infinite many choices for the 
for that coordinate. Okay? We cut the angle here. Look at this solid here. Okay? This is a D time solid bounded above and below by the two surfaces, U1 and U2. Okay? And look at the projection of this solid onto the XY plane. It's like this. For if you use rectangular coordinate, it will be very difficult to describe this. However, you can use polar coordinate down here, okay, which means we use symmetrical coordinate. Then it will be easier to describe this region on the XY plane okay, because the shape is kind of like a because. Yeah, you look at the straight like this. Because the angle here, the data go from alpha to beta. Okay. To describe this, okay. To describe this solid here, uh, we do it this way. So we we'll say Z is between U1 and U2. And then the project we project this onto the XY plane. This region here we call that D. We call that D. And here we just put x comma y belong to t. Okay. Then we describe the solid. And the d here, when you describe it using polar coordinate, so the r here, okay, looking at the picture, looking at the picture, I'll go from what to what? I'll go from You see the, the inner curve over here, right? Is this one. The R here equal to H1 theta. That's the one, right? And then the outer one is this one. R equal to H2 theta. So this region is bounded inside here by this curve, outside here by this curve. So R will go from H1 to H2, and then data will go from alpha to beta, okay, alpha to beta. So you describe this way. Notice that over here, the data go from constant to constant, from alpha to beta. In the past, when you talk about triple integral, at that time, we first Beside it, what type of solid this is, right? It's a D type. Then we integrate with respect to D first. D go from U1 to U2, the surface below to the surface above, right? And then here we put DA, which is the, the area element, and integrate that over the region D. Region D here. Now, because the D here doesn't change for symmetrical coordinate, right? So the inner integral here will stay the same. So let's just keep the in, inner integral here the same. So this part over here will stay the same. All right, and then the dA over here, you're going to remember, this is the area element, right? That is the area element. This side here is R C data. This side here is dR. So the area element is R D R D data, which is this. So we're going to replace the D A here by R D R D data, and then we integrate over the region D. Now, what's the region D? This is the region D over here. But this time we're going to evaluate this double integral. Okay, this double integral here in polar coordinate. So in polar coordinate. Because we're using polar coordinate, x, y will change. x will be replaced by r cosine theta. y will be replaced by r sine theta. Wherever you see the x and the y, just replace them correspondingly. The upper and lower limit will in terms of, we will do that substitution, right? Like that. Okay. Now, 
because the DA here, the every element is all the RD data, and now you have the DD here. So you actually get this R DD DR D data. R D D D R D data now is the the value element. The value element over here, uh, if you look at the picture, the value element is this one. So down here, the area element is all the RD data, but the height for this is DZ. So all DZ, the all D data is the value element. So, so you have this one. Now you figure out the R. R change from H1 to H2, and data change from alpha to beta. Now this is the formula for triple, in triple integral in symmetrical coordinate. It looks very kind of messy for now, but as long as you remember the x and y replaced by R cosine data, R sine data, and this is the random element and you just need to find the corresponding uh, upper and lower limit for d, r, and data. Okay. Then it will work. Okay. Okay, let's think about the steps. Okay. So what are the steps to convert this triple integral from rectangular to symmetrical coordinate? The first thing to do, step one, is the y x equal to work. R cosine data, right? And then why the y here as well? R sine data. Then what about z? Leaving z as it is. Okay, so d, you're not going to change it. Okay? In symmetrical coordinate and uh, rectangular coordinate, uh, they will be the same. Okay, that's the second step. Okay, and the third step here, you're going to use the appropriate limits of integration of for d, r, and data. So you try to figure out what will be the appropriate limits of integration. Okay. Finally, you're going to replace this random element dv by what? Everyone? dv by what? r, dz, dr, d data. Yeah, you got it. So we're going to replace the um, dv by r d d d r d data. Um, maybe this picture will help you remember, right? So dz can decide the height, and the base area here is r d r d data. So the random element will be r d g d r d data. Okay, so that's the one. Now you might wonder when we use symmetrical coordinate. Okay, so what kind of problem we use it? Now, when the solid, okay, the projection onto one of the plane is a circular shape, okay, you probably want to use the symmetrical coordinate, okay. Actually, when you project to the xy plane, the region is a circular shape. You think about using symmetrical coordinate, and especially when the function involves this expression, x squared plus y squared, then you. You suggest uh, uh, it will be make, it will be much easier to use symmetrical coordinate because uh, what do we know about x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So if the function involves this expression x squared plus y squared, you consider using symmetrical coordinate. Okay. Right. Let's look at some examples. Okay. The first example. Okay. Now, this solid lies between this cylinder and below this plane and above this paraboloid. Okay. So I have the picture here. The cylinder is, is this cylinder over here. X squared plus Y squared equal 1. We know the plane Z equal to 4. Z equal to 4 is this plane above. Okay. Right? A horizontal plane. Z equal to 4. So let me write this here. So Z equal to 4 is the plane above. And down here, down here, uh, we have a paraboloid, 
see right here, the parabola over here. This parabola has this equation, z equal to 1 minus x squared minus y squared. And they give you the density function at any point. Uh, it's proportional to its distance from the axis of the cylinder. We try to find the mass, right? How do you find the mass of the solid if, if you're given the density function? Density function, what is the mass of, what's the formula for the mass of the solid? Is the triple integral of what? The density, right? The triple integral of the density. Then integrating this over the solid, then you get the mass of the solid, right? Now, this one here, they didn't give you explicitly the formula for the density, but they tell you it is proportional to the distance from the axis of the cylinder, this is the axis of cylinder, which is the z axis. So when it's proportional to that, what does it, what does rho equal to? Rho equal to k times, well, think about you have a point over here, right? X, Y, Z, right? Let's, let's label the, this using the, uh, we're taking the coordinates that will be X, Y, Z, right? Then from here, the distance from here to the axis, what's the distance from here to the axis? That's the R, right? What does, how is R relate to X and Y? R equal to what? X squared plus Y squared. Yeah, you got it. Good job. Okay. R equal to square root of X squared plus Y squared. Okay. So that's the distance from this point to the axis. And we know that the density is proportional to this distance. So that means rho is equal to kr, right? Where k is a constant. So we have one third. Now, we're going to regard this as, this is uh, what, what type of solid you're going to regard this as, x, y, or z. It's a z type, right? It's a z type, okay? So we have this surface above, right? this surface above, right? And then we also have this surface below, okay? For the surface above, z equal to 4, right? So the one that above, we have g equal 4, right? What about this one below? The surface below here, what does g equal to? g equal to 1 minus x squared minus y squared, right? Like this. Okay, good. All right, now looking at this, looking at the shape, right? The projection of this solid onto the xy plane is a circular shape. So that will make us think about using symmetrical coordinates to do the triple integral here. Then we have to express this in terms of r and theta, right? Now, can we express this in terms of r and theta? Minus x squared minus y squared. So that is 1 minus this quantity x squared plus y squared, right? So, in terms of what is this x squared plus y squared? Is this r squared, right? So, now we can describe this solid here. I haven't put this in. The cylinder is r. What is this cylinder? r equal to what? R equal to R equal to one. Yeah, you got it. So R equal to one, and the parabola is D equal to one minus R squared. Mm -hmm. So, so this one here, D minus R squared. Okay. Now we can write the solid here. So D is greater than equal to what? Let's make it work. D 
found it below by 1 minus r square. So we have 1 minus r square here. And then let them equal to what? Above will be what? 4, right? D equal to 4 here. So 4. Okay. Now on the, on the xy plane, we're going to use a polar coordinate, right? So R go from what to what? Look at the look at the circle down on the XY plane. R go from what to what? Zero to one. Yes, we got it. So R go from zero to one. Okay. What about data? Data go from what to what? It's the it's the whole circle, right? So zero to two pi. We got it. Okay. So it will be zero to two pi. And this is uh, a type of Okay, the density function is k k times square root of x squared plus y squared, which is which is the same as k times r, right? So therefore, we can we can write out the the triple integral for the the mass for the solid. Okay, let's go to the triple integral here. Okay, so the density function here will be k times square root of x squared plus y squared. Now in terms of r and data, so that will be that will be k times r, right? Okay, so we have k. Times R. K times R. Okay. All right. Um, what about dv? dv is going to be replaced. The the value element replaced by what? Uh, I hardly said that. <laughs> so it is R d v d r d beta, right? Okay. And we we know that z go from one minus r squared to four. R go from 0 to 1, and then data go from 0 to 2 pi. Now, some of you say, uh, can you switch this uh, DRD data? Uh, yes, you could, because R and data go from constant to constant. You can, actually, you can switch the case of DRD data, okay? As long as you keep the corresponding upper known limit here, okay? All right, now, after this, then how do we evaluate this integral? We will start from the inner integral, innermost integral first, right? So this is kr squared. Okay. And integrate that with respect to z. Okay. So you will get what? kr squared. Right? kr squared has nothing to, uh, so we're going to, it's kind of like a constant. We will back to z, right? So now we we'll multiply this by z, and then z go from one minus r squared to four. That's for the innermost integral, and then you substitute. Okay, substitute four in it. Substitute z equal to one minus r r squared in it. You will get this one. Okay, and then the rest here you, is this routine. Right, let's do the double integral. So it turned out to be six. So what do we learn today? Okay. Uh, we actually learn about symmetrical coordinate, uh, using that to do triple integral. Okay. When we do that, uh, to change from symmetrical coordinate to Cartesian coordinate, we use the three equations. So what are they? X equal to what? R cosine data, right? Good. So R cosine data, Y equal to R sine data. And then what about Z? Z will leave it as it is, right? D equal to Z. And to change back from Cartesian to symmetrical coordinate, so it goes the other way, Cartesian to symmetrical coordinate, uh, we use this three equations, right? R squared equal to what? X squared plus 
square plus y square tangent data equal to y over y over x yes. and d equal to z. When we do a triple integral over a solid, that is z simple pi z solid. And when the region down here can be expressed using polar coordinates, but we think about we use we're gonna use symmetrical coordinates. Okay. So what are the steps? The first thing, the first step will be writing x equal to r cosine data and writing y as what r sine data and leaving z as it is. Then after that, we need to figure out the appropriate limits of integration for z, r, and data. And the last will be replacing dv by what dv replaced by r, dz, dr, d data. Uh, this is the the value element. Okay. Then after that, you will have this. This will be the triple integral using symmetrical coordinates. Now you don't. It looks really long, but remember, once you replace x and y by this, and replace dv by this, you actually will end up the triple integral over here. Okay. And uh, when do we use a uh, symmetrical coordinate? Now, when the solid that you integrate over can be easily described in symmetrical coordinate, which means the region down here is kind of like a circular shape, or or easy easy to be described using polar coordinate down here. Then you think about using symmetrical coordinate, uh, especially when the function that you integrate with involve this expression x squared plus y squared then you consider using symmetrical coordinate to do the triple integral okay